So we were asked to do an aquarium floor in a mall built in the 70s. We already recorded the, the show, but we're kind of doing the intro now. Just a quick overview, 12,000 feet metallic epoxy. We're just going to tell the story about kind of how it went and some things that went wrong and things that went right. Cool. Cool. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, I'm Tim C. Hey, I'm Landon Blanks. And you're listening to Hacking Concrete. Yeah! Of all things in aquarium. <laughs> I know it. It was, um, it, it's in our mall too. It's not like it's a separate, you know, every aquarium right. I've been to, it's like a facility that's like entirely away from everything else, right? Who would put it in a mall? So it's in the mall. Yeah. We would have never thought that we would be doing such a intricate job in our mall. <laughs> Much less it be an aquarium. Right. That's right. <laughs> so um, we're talking about the project is the Sequest. Is it, is it an aquarium? It's not an aquarium. It, their, their thing is more than just fish. Isn't that what the logo it's, says? It's an experience. Yeah, the Sequest experience. And um, it was an experience for us, I would say. Big time. Big time. <laughs> yeah, because you can't really call it Sequest because it's got Egypt. It's got China. <laughs> I went in, we went there the other day, and in Egypt, there's a, um, it looks like a regular old house cat. I didn't know if it was some special leopard I'd never heard about that was just miniature. I don't know. Maybe. Egypt is cool, though. Yeah. I noticed while we're in there that the wallabies, is that what they're called? They're hanging in the pouches there? Yes, in pouches. They're not very big. They're smaller than the cat. They are tiny. I'm thinking they're baby wallabies. So is the cat looking at the wallabies thinking that that's a meal? It's probably a tasty snack. <laughs> Got to be tasty. Uh -huh. Who doesn't like a wallaby? Yeah. Otters. Sharks, iguanas, big stinking snakes, man. Yeah. And their thing with, with Sequest is you can touch all the animals. Right. Like they want you to interact with them. And which, we weren't necessarily aware of that. No, I, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely did not know that was a thing. I didn't know people would be reaching into the tank, playing with the fish, and that you wouldn't get, that's the kind of thing you get fussed at elsewhere. That's right, that's right. But this is an interaction. They even have mermaids swimming around in there with them. In our mall. The part about the job that was so challenging was the fact that it was in our old mall. And if you guys know about malls, how many Sprint stores and whatever stores, clothing stores throughout 30, 40, 50 years have been remodeled and demoed? Then all that stuff gets the floor just torn to pieces. Well, we can talk about what used to, they have, do have a storefront that like reaches out into the mall. That's how you get into the aquarium. Right. And it was Pacific Sun. Yep. Before that, it was KB Toys at some point in the past. KB Toys. I forgot about KB Toys. It was, uh, it was Babbage's at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Babbage's? Babbage's. Was that a chain? Babbage's? <laughs> it's like a video uh, game store. Great. But, great. <laughs> but whatever the case, it's been a lot of things. So there's like, you know, two or three layers of tile was there at one point. That old brown tile, that new yes. ceramic tile. I mean, it's just a lot of... And every time they demo, they make trenches. You know, for whatever, sewage lines, whatever they need. Like the cash register is here in one spot and they want to put it over there. Right. They, they literally cut a trench in the floor, jackhammer the concrete out, run the electric and set the cash register up and they, and they pour the concrete back. Right. And so all that stuff was there. And the owner comes to us and said, says, we want it seamless. We don't want to see any of this stuff in the floor. Right. They want it perfectly smooth, perfectly flat. They want it to look like it is brand new. Right. So the wallabies can have a nice place. That's right. How, how much did it, did it hurt to walk in and see like the turtle habitat? We did that floor in there, right? And it's, it looks like sand coming out of the desert or whatever. It's not a turtle, whatever it is. But we walked in there and like we spent all this time. We were worried about like this spot over there and this spot over here. And we walked in yesterday and it was completely covered in mulch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but underneath that mulch is a pretty floor boy. Yeah. It's pretty. And it's, it's cool. You never know it. What we figured out is that they don't, their design changes throughout the process. And so their habitats change and it's all this cool different stuff going on. And so you just never know. Anyway, so in today's show, we thought we'd just tell you about the project. Kind of run you through it real quick. Just right. kind of see what it looked like. So seamless metallic epoxy. However, with the floor being so old, as many of you guys know in construction, sometimes they don't have vapor barriers underneath the concrete. And this was... Some of this concrete was less than four inches. Crazy. Um, it was really weird. They were like, in the, during the prep stage, there was lifts driving back and forth so much. And there would just be like a spot here or there that yeah. would just crumble. Right, just crumble right underneath <laughs> the lifts. So like right as we're, you know, you guys ground it and got it ready. And then right as we're ready to pour the, the vapor barrier, 
we're like, oh wait, there's a spot there and there's a spot there. Like it, it never stopped. Okay. So that, so we're getting ready to pour all of a sudden they're pouring new concrete. And what happens? That new concrete has to gas out. It has to cure. And then we're supposed to put a seamless floor on top of that. Challenging. Yeah, it was tough. It was, it was unusual, definitely an unusual project. And, um, I do appreciate that they were aware, at least, that they yeah. were asking a lot. Yep. It helped it, us a ton. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is that not only did they want it seamless, but they wanted metallic epoxy. So as you know, with metallic epoxy, if you don't know, the pigment travels to... The pigment floats in the clear epoxy. Yep. So it floats to the low spot. Right. So with all those imperfections in the floor, it's going to float to all the low spots and just show the imperfections more. Right. So if we patch a, um, a spot in the floor and it's not perfectly flat... Even though it's like glassy and nice looking, if it's got like a, a, a wave in it, it's going to be like a dark line in that wave. Right. Yep. So we had to figure out how not challenging to have that happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was difficult. So we had to do, we had to grind, prep, patch, try to cover everything. Then we had to do a moisture barrier. Mm -hmm. Then once, mo once moisture barrier was good, then we moved into the 12 colors of metallic epoxy. That's right. <laughs> All blended. Yep. We met this guy. His name is Mooch. He's like the the head themer. Is that his title? The themer. Ah, uh, he's just a talented guy. Yeah. Just a so his company does all the rock carving around, and they built all the tanks in place. They did all those things, and he also was in charge of kind of what ours was going to look like. Right. Right. He's the vision behind the look. And I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if he really ever really was comfortable that we were going to be able to pull it off. True. I True. Mean, Couple. Of, the the owner was not. The owner didn't think we could pull it off for one, which again, you know, he wanted that seamless look. He wanted what he wanted. And so in order to pull that off, we had to give the right type of sample to let him be at ease. And then Mooch had never used this material before on a, on a site as well. So he didn't know what to expect. I think the one thing in the prep that kind of got us was that we were, we're always really agreeable people. That's just, um, if you listen to our show, I'm sure you've gathered that we're pretty easy going. And I thought that, um, you know, during the prep, I thought it was funny that like we were letting people work around us and over us and, yeah. you know, there's a, a hundred people in there as we're grinding, but at some point that all has to stop. It's got to stop. And it, it was really tough for us because we had to all of a sudden, we had to go from being like, oh, it's fine. Come on in. You're fine. Do your thing. Get out of the way. It's fine. We had to go from that attitude to you can't come in here. Yep. Because we're getting <laughs> ready to pour. Yeah. Like they can't track dust in right before we pour the floor. It's a weird thing for us to do though, to go from being nice and easy going to you can't come in here anymore anymore. But the, um, our secret weapon for that though is, is there's one specific employee. We just <laughs> say, all right, all right, Troy, it's time to shut it down. He, he makes sure that it's clear that number one, he's in charge of who has access to it. And number two, you should be scared of him. Right. That's right. That's right. He don't play around. <laughs> so Troy shut it down. Uh, and we patched it and we did the vapor barrier epoxy. It, it all went really well. It was great. Right. Day two was the metallic coat. So this is the tough part for us because it was 12 different colors over 12,000 feet. It had to all be poured at one time and all the colors, uh, Mooch didn't want any visible seams. Like he wanted the colors to blend from, from green to brown to blue or whatever. Right. We had one, we had one hard line in the entire job that was at the entrance of the, of the experience and then in China, in between China and Antarctica. No, Iceland. Iceland, right. Whatever. Which actually Iceland is not really icy in real life. So it should be Greenland. It should be Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so we keep saying we did it all in one pour. They kind of made a change in the process that, hey, we're gonna do it in halves. So they gave us an extra seam between Iceland and China. Right. But um, the challenge, though, was the colors because, you know, I think I figured that we did about 350 gallons of epoxy mixed in three-gallon batches. So that's a lot of mixing. And then divided that up into, like, a bunch of different colors. It was harder. It was as hard to coordinate the mixes. Mm. Don't you think? Right. Because the problem is when you're doing this, and, and I hope this is helpful to some people, but... When you have all these different color metallics going on, when you want a pathway of brown and then on the side of the brown, you have a green and then you have a blue on the other side of that, you have to essentially be, 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 be prepping blue, green, brown, 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 green, green. Oh, some more blue. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now we need red. You know, yeah. it's everything. It is. Yeah. 
And the, the epoxy, did you say that already? The epoxy sets up in like, it's like a 10 minute pot life from what we use. 10 minute pot life while you're running around trying to figure out which color you need next. So what a 10 minute pot life means is that that material is going to be hard in that bucket in 10 minutes. Right. You have to dump it out on the floor and that slows it down because I guess when it's stacked on top of itself, it creates heat, sets up faster. So you dump it out of the bucket, you have another, you probably have an extra 10 minutes. Right. So from mixing it to getting on the floor, you got to do it in about, wouldn't you say three or four minutes? Because it kind of got to, you know, definitely. after about that, it gets a little sketchy. Right. So because we're doing it working at this mall, we're mixing outside. I mean, 90 degrees, 90 degrees outside. And you were, you carried buckets. You were kind of in charge of the mixes and hauling the buckets. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when we first started, it had to have been like a hundred yard walk. That was a long ways. And the problem is there, the guys are so far away mixing. We're selling them brown. Then you're yelling, no, we need more green. <laughs> we really well, need the brown's it. ready. What are you going to do with the brown? Because it's ready. It's hot. <laughs> Yeah, so we just dump it out and hopefully it doesn't get away from us, you know? It was it was cool, though, because the, um, the Duraflex rep was there in town with us, and, you know, it, it got a little sketchy at one point, and, and you don't normally, you know, he kind of jumped in there with us. Yeah, he did. It, and, he you did. know, it was he, nice. He was rolling a lot, which we needed the help. Yeah, we really needed help that day, and um, we realized on phase two to bring extra people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I right. thought we had enough. We had, like, ten people. Yeah. We needed one more. So, so, so we started in the Amazon we went into Egypt, then we went into the grasslands, and then we went into an Antarctica. So Antarctica was the final one. Iceland. Iceland, I'm sorry. But really Greenland. Greenland. So anyway, <laughs> it's the final one with blue, right? Yep. And they wanted white on top of the blue. So here I am. <laughs> the idea was icebergs and water. Icebergs and water. So here I am holding a pint of the white that we're putting into the blue. Mm -hmm. everything had gone well the whole way until that point and I was looking at my hand and my hand starting to get hot <laughs> and the epoxy was gone we make this mistake like oh it's getting hot dump it out <laughs> and that's the wrong thing that's wrong the, thing. The, the wrong thing you should say oh it's getting hot let's make a new batch right and that's at the very end of that, that process and so how many times does the job go wrong right at the end yeah oh man Iceland, Greenland, and Antarctica that one killed us because we dumped it out. <laughs> we dumped it out. And there was a big white spot on the floor and it was less than desirable. Yes. It was okay. It was okay. It, it was the only spa, spot that everybody, everybody loved everything. And then they saw that spot and uh, what happened here? Yeah. So we ended up having to redo Iceland. Um, it's kind of a funny situation. We re, um, so we poured like, that whole thing. We'll go over to phase two in a minute, but at the end of phase two, we, um, we redid Iceland and we poured that on a, um, I want to say it was a, was it a Saturday, Friday evening, Friday evening. It's Friday evening. We poured that. And, um, so we finished about five or six. And then that night, uh, the, the GC on the job called me at about eight and said, Hey, somebody stepped in Iceland. <laughs> so we, we did it a second time and it was perfect. Perfect, man. And somebody stepped in Iceland and put footprints in it. Right. It's just understandable, man. People are trying to get tanks ready for animals. In two weeks. I mean, they need to get there. They need to do places. They need to finish carving. It's the time, the timeline. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. There's a lot of like, there's always a push to get in. Always. Every job. And, um, but yeah, the, the timeline killed us. Like there was like walls of plastic, signs up, yellow ribbon, yep. everything. Just walked right in it. Walked right walked in Walked into the metallic. We put the top coat on, fixed that, put the top coat on. Someone walked in it again. Yeah. Somebody walked in the top coat right after. I mean, then it rained on it. No, no the, one of the tanks leaked on it. Oh, the tanks leaked? Yeah. I thought one it of came the, off the roof. No, no. One of the fish tanks leaked when they were filling it, and water got on it, messed it up the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's nonstop. Like, it, we did Iceland. For, I think tonight, we're going to go tonight and touch it up one last time where there's a footprint in the top clear coat. That'll be our fifth touch up. Fifth touch up. In Iceland, Greenland, Antarctica. But. We talk about all the problems, but we were super stoked to get the job because it really put us to the test. Let us see what we could do and also be a part of such a cool project. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that's going to be in Lynchburg for a long, long time, I mm -hmm. would assume. And um, <laughs> there's, there's this other big high profile job in Lynchburg that a competitor did. And to this day, everyone <laughs> talks to us about that job. Did yeah. you guys, they ask us, did you guys, you guys do that did, job? did you do that job? No, 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 but we did do this one. No. We did do this one. So it's just good to kind of hang your hat on that type of project. <laughs> so now we've got the job that I think that people are going to say, did you guys do? Yeah. Right. You know, right. And that's the one we're going to tell everybody in 
that we know. Hey, have you seen Sequest? We did Sequest. <laughs> yeah, Go look yeah, at right. Sequest. That's good. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you um, finance. The finances on it are great. We really want to obviously make as much as we can all the time. But mm. this one is going to, um, I would say this brings us probably going to bring us work for a long time. Right, right. That kind of out- outweighed the, the finances on this one. Even if people don't do metallic, you know, if they don't want it to do metallic in their garage or if they don't want it at their university or whatever, um, just having pulled that off. Right. Such a complex thing. Mm-hmm. And they look at that and say, oh, you guys did that? Well, surely you can do this little job. <laughs> yeah, right. It buys you a lot of credibility. So we came back, we fixed all their problems, and then all we had to do was China. Pirate Land? I think it's called Pirate Land. Shark Area? Mm-hmm. And the exit. That's right. And it went well. Yeah, so we made a video for the... Um, What is that thing we're a part of? The Decorative Concrete Council. Decorative Concrete Council. Which is part of the American Society of... ASCC? Concrete concrete Contractors. Okay. Yeah. We made a video for this video contest Mm -hmm. for the World of Concrete coming up. Yeah. Um, Put a link here for it. Anyways, you should watch it. It's the whole job condensed into 60 seconds. It's complete chaos. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty pretty funny. Pretty cool. It's definitely worth watching, though, if you want to see a condensed version of what we did. Right. Ahead of time, what were you thinking of, like... What was your biggest concern? My biggest concern was, can we truly cover all these holes and patches? I mean, it's ridiculous. The amount. It was a lot. Can we do that? Can we pull it off? Yeah. Um, can we get through it without all these different colors and, the, and the, the epoxy setting off on us? I was worried about animals getting out and getting in the epoxy. Yeah. <laughs> right. A gecko scurrying across. Yeah. A, insta- a, a, a friend of mine on Instagram he um he posted a picture of a metallic garage. I'll, I'll link his Instagram handle in the, in the description, and I'll put the picture up right here. Um, I was worried that this was going to happen. <laughs> anyways, yeah, too funny. So, anyways, that was the job. We put urethane on it. It was done. Um, you know, it's we. I I, jo- I say this all the time. Like we're in the middle of this, and it's like super stressful. Yeah, it's I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> And um, always, always say, hey, you know, next week we're gonna um, we're gonna feel like we blinked and missed this whole thing. And it's so true. In the middle of life, in the middle of the heaviest times, it's like, how am I gonna get through this freaking thing? Yeah. And all of a sudden, you look back and it was a blur. I know it's done, and we're that's, sitting here. That's the thing you say. It's a blur. It'll yeah. be a blur. It'll be a blur. Just head down and get through it. It'll be, and it'll be. We'll get through it, and it'll be fine. Just like that, it was over. And then a week later, we're sitting in in a garage, <laughs> talking to cameras, and to, you know. We have time now. Like that was like three weeks of completely mentally consumed. Yes. With that. Yes. For like three weeks. And um, now we just hope we get paid. (laughs) That's right. Now we hope we get paid. (laughs)